Hello in the next episode. In today's video I'm going to solder this small chip in Nintendo Switch V2. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. It doesn't matter if you just started the journey with electronics or you are an experienced designer, but if you'd like to create some project, PCBWay will get you covered. So you can design your own PCB board in just a few clicks. You can even upload your project and you will get a manual review by a professional team. Also, PCBWay can assemble PCB for you and they source the components if needed. Wait a second, PCBWay just announced their sixth project design contest. You just need to create electronic or mechanical design. If you love to create electronic projects that are useful in our life or mechanical projects, this contest is for you. You can win $1,500 in cash plus $200 in coupon. A toynable open source robotic cut. This is for the first place. Second price is $1,000 cash plus $100 coupon plus Raspberry Pi. And the third price is $500 cash plus $50 coupon plus Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. And more details in the link in the description. So now let's get back to our repair. Okay, so my customer asked me to install PicoFly in his switch, but he's already prepared some of the points and the PicoFly he didn't remove you know the usb port and buttons but he also soldered the resistors to that certain points but i'm not going to use this chip i'm going to use something better and it's going to be this chip this is the improved pico fly chip and it's got very very flat surface which is the advantage all right so let's do this i'm going to start by updating you know the firmware we need to have the latest one so let's power this on The system version is 16.0.3, but the latest one is 16.1.0. So let's update it to the latest one because my customer wants to play in the original firmware with original games. Alright, so everything is connected. Let's update the firmware. I know we've got an update. And yes. Okay, so now the firmware is 16.1.0. So we've got the latest firmware. Let's check if it's reading the SD card and it's reading. My customer provided, you know, 64 gigs SD card. I'm going just to solder that chip here. All right, so I'm starting with disconnecting the battery and removing, you know, the SD card reader. All right, next step, we just need to get access here. So let me remove the shield. Let's remove the thermal paste from the APU. All right, the APU is very clean now. So now, from this point, we have two options. As you can see here, this is our console, and we can solder the certain points like RST, CMD, CLK, and that zero directly to the motherboard. And we can do it also on the other way, directly in the NAND memory adapter, and we can solder this like this. I've done it many times in this way, but today I'm going to solder in this way. Okay, first phone, we've got RST, CMD, CLK, and that zero. All right, so I'm going to solder the flexi tape to the APU first. So let's do it. All right, so first thing, what I always do, I always thin the parts with the solder. Okay, other side, the same. A little bit of rocks. Another step, you just need to solder the wire to the middle pins. Let's solder this here. All right, and now it's perfectly fine. We've got the wire soldered on. Let's clean this from the flux. All right, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so here we've got CMD point. So this is the point A. Here we've got CLK point. That's zero, we've got number three here. And I'm not sure about the RST point. Let me check this. Okay, but as you can see here, it's hard to get, you know, RST point, point B, because we have a little bit different design. So according to the picture, here it should be diode. Check that one more time. Yes, 
we've got diode but we should have four places one two three four and here we've got only three points so i'm assuming the first one can be our point b but to make sure i'm going just to set up my multimeter from the beep mode and i'm going just to compare so as we can see rst is here second pin from the bottom is rst second pin from the bottom so i'm going just to disconnect this and this configuration as you can see second pin from the bottom so that means second pin from the top well, now we've got beep mode let's check if this where is point b so this line the top one is our yes second pin so that means this is our rst point point b let's go into the diode mode black probe on the ground and check the reading and the reading is okay actually it should be between 1.2 and 1.8 so this is it actually but what if i you know connect back the nand memory all right so nand memory is already connected so let's check this now and you've got the same reading all right so i'm going to solder point b here and other points directly to the motherboard all right so let's put some flux and solder okay all right so according to the diagram cmd should be here this is that zero point cmd and clk and they are all good correct so i just need to solder all one two three four points on this part of the motherboard because from here there's a 3.3 volts and whoa, 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 it's unbelievable. Have you seen that? Look at this. Someone messed, you know, around his cups. Oh, unbelievable. So you see, we've got short here. All components are shorted. So I'm pretty sure that we cannot charge this switch because of the shorts. So I'm wondering if it's done more damage because, you know, you don't know this probably, but if you remove the usb power management ic your switch will be still working fine in some cases you can get error message but it will power up the same is with the p13 usb chip on the back so if it's shorted you can just remove it you can you know assemble the console back and everything will be fine but you won't see the picture on the teddy but it's not necessary to run it look at this what they've done here all right just need to go a little bit closer whoa you know, I didn't want to remove the motherboard because I was thinking, you know, it's going to be an easy job. But I'm not sure if I'm able to remove the solder from here. Someone has used, you know, the solder which has got lead-free solder, probably, you know, the Chinese, the cheapest solder. And so I need to use my, the soldering wick because we need to sort this out first. You know, the solder they've used, it's... No, the worst quality like i said and i need to use my hot air all right so this is the moment of true all right so a black probe on the ground let's check if we got the short somewhere the beep mode we have no short here here no okay 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 all right looks like this chip it's still okay but i'm not sure from the reading it looks like it's good enough it looks like my customer has attempted you know by himself and had it something like this and he stopped all right let's continue so i'm going to take 3.3 volts from here and the ground from here so let's come back here all right let's have a look at the points clk and third from the bottom is that zero okay third from the bottom got here that zero and clk is here all right one two three four points to solder this direction should be better for me 
All right, nice one. One is soldered. Let's go to the another one. Or I think it's strong enough. This direction should be still okay, still good for me. Beautiful. And one more point left. This is the dot zero point. All right, so now we should clean all those points. All right, everything is nice and clean. So now we need to solder 3.3 volts and the ground. So let's apply some flux here and here. Let's quickly clean this. Right, so this point is done. So we just need the ground point and the CPU flexi tape and we can start installing the chip. All right, so we've got the ground finally. So let's clean it a little bit. All right, that's fine. Now it's time for the CPU. All right, so as usual, you just need to press a little bit more, press it down, apply some flux on the anchor points. All right, so the anchor points are soldered properly, so now we can solder points here. Just let a little bit press it down. Okay, have we got flux on it? No, not yet. No, yes, and the same here. So let's apply some solder now. And if this one looks weird, but we apply some more flux. We should be able to correct this. All right, so the job is done. The job is done. Let's clean the flux. Multimeter on the beep mode. Let's check this connections here. And we got good reading. It should be ground. It's ground. The same, good reading and ground. Okay, next step is clean the core. Just need to apply the thermal paste just a little bit. Like this. Okay. All right, so the APU shield is already on. So what we just need to do, just need to use our double shot tape. All right, now should be right. Let me just cut off this captain tape. So here we've got the ground. All right, so the ground point is done. 3.3 is going here. 3.3 soldered. We've got CMD and CLK here. Okay, you can see this. This is that zero point. That zero is here. That zero is soldered. What we've got else? CLK, CMD. CMD first, and CMD is here. This is CMD. Okay, so now we should CLK. We should solve the CLK. CLK, CLK is here. Okay, so CLK point is already soldered. So we need point B, RST, and the CPU point to be soldered. So this is point B or RST. And the last one is the wire from the CPU. All right, so let's clean the points. All right, so everything looks fine, nice and clean. So let's set up our multimeter in the diode mode and let's measure the points. Black probe on the ground and now let's start from 3.3 volts. And this is the correct value. Next one is the dot zero, absolutely fine. CMD, good, CLK, good, RST, 
So this is our point B. It's perfect. CPU, it's okay. And the ground, it's also fine. So now I'm safe to connect, you know, the battery connector. And let's press the power button and let's hope that it will work. All right, so and now it should glitch. Yes, it's glitching now. And now we should see the picture on the screen. So we can see the picture on the screen. Everything looks brilliant. So what I'm going to do now, I just got, you know, the SD card and I'm going to plug it to my PC. I need to see what is on this SD card. It looks like someone already, already prepared, you know, the SD card. But you know, I updated firmware to the latest one. And from this point, you can have some problems with the custom firmware. So let's press the power button again. And now we are in the eminent, not eminent. Can we, let's check. Can we, eminent is enabled. So we should be able to start the eminent, but nothing is on the screen at the moment. So I think this card needs to be rebuilt. It's completely blank. All right, I'm going to press the power button and hold it. It would be easier if I disconnect the battery first. One more time. Okay, so I'm going just to start the custom firmware. And here we've got the problem. All right, I just need to power this off. I need to remove the SD card. And let me update it this first. Okay, so I updated, you know, the SD card. Let's check this now. Let's try the just since. Let's try the first option. This is like a Sysland with custom firmware and it's booting up nicely. All right, this is, that's fine. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. But I'm just wondering if the emunant is fine or no. All right, the console is off. Let's turn this on. Launch and custom firmware. And it's not working. All right, so this is not a problem. We can create Eminent later. So what I'm going to just to do, I'm just going to disconnect the battery. So we just need to add some Captain tape on the top. All right, it's secured. Let me test now. It's perfect. There's no pressure on this. Oh, so it's perfect. I'm going to screw this down. All right, so let's test it now. Let's insert the SD card in, and yes. All right, everything is in good working condition, so no problem at all. I just need to delay the emulant from the SD card and need to create a new one for my customers, but the job is done. The most important that the PicoFly is already installed. Okay, so the job has been done, and everything is done properly. I've tested it, and I can send it back to my customer. Alright, thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and see you next time!